Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Colour Christmas with me. So um, RJ put out this beautiful book, I'm sure you've all seen a flip through. Unfortunately I missed doing a flip through because um, it's been out for a couple of weeks I think now. Um, and it's just a beautiful book and there is some gorgeous Christmas pages in here. So I thought we would colour this little Robin wreath together. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to do all the little birds as robins. Obviously we've got our two very cute little owls down here having a cup of tea. And we're going to do a sort of um, snowy blue purpley background instead of black. Then we're going to add glitter and glam and yeah, it's just going to be gorgeous. So I am using my Prismacolors today. Um, again, because they're out on my desk and we haven't used them for such a long time. So let's get started. So if I bring you in and we're going to start around these little birds. I've got um, four colours at the moment. We might need to add to it later on if I feel that it needs brightening up or anything. So I've got Palmer Violet. Um, they will be on the screen. Palmer Violet and I've got uh, Grade Lavender and I've got um, Violet Lake and what's this one? This is Sky Blue Light. And I'm just going to kind of sort of blend them in randomly. So I'm going to take the Violet Lake. Where should we start? Let's start down here and put that Violet Lake in. And then I'll just sort of soften it round the edges when we've when we've done to meet those snowflakes, and we can do the same round the little fellas at the bottom. And I forgot that I was very zoomed in then, so you couldn't see what I was doing. <laughs> I hope you're all um, okay. Um, I've, I had an incredibly scary experience this week. Oh my goodness! It actually. You know, I laugh about it now, but it really traumatised me at the time. Um, my husband cooked me a roast dinner. Um, what day? It must have been. Was it, it might have been Saturday, actually. I think we might have had it early this week. And, um, yeah, we had, he cooked me roast beef and did all the trimmings. He's a very good cook, like that. And, yeah, love our roast dinners. So I've had this cold, as you know, I've been telling you about, and I've still got this bit of cough left over, a very annoying cough. It's going now. Um, and I think what I must have done, I took a bite of roast beef, and I think I must have coughed, or I don't know what happened. Anyway, I swallowed this piece of beef that I hadn't chewed, and um, it got stuck in my throat. Well, I was fine. I knew that it was stuck and obviously I could feel it stuck at the back of my throat and I kept swallowing. I can still feel that sensation now and I kept swallowing and it wouldn't move. Um, I could breathe and everything. I was fine. Um, and then um, I couldn't get, I couldn't shift it. It was clear, it was stuck right, you know, at the entrance to my, I suppose, I don't know, like the back of my throat then, right down there. And um, so I took a drink of I had, a, I had a drink next to me, so I took a drink to see if I could wash it down. Sorry, this is Palmer Violet. And the drink must have moved it, and I couldn't breathe. Um, it must have must have moved it down further or shifted it, I don't know, but I could not breathe. I could not get air in at all. And um, so in panic, I just I stood up. I don't know what I thought I was going to do, but I stood up and I managed to get the words out. Because my husband looked at me and said, oh my God, are you all right? And I managed to get just get the words out, help me. And um, obviously he came over. By the time he came over, um, I had vomited. And thank the Lord it came out. Um, it was a fair-sized chunk. And um, I, I, yeah, I was, I was really traumatised by it. I was, the fear of not being able to get air in to my lungs was just the, that panic feeling was horrendous I can't imagine I don't suffer with asthma 
but I can't imagine what um, people go through. People must feel um, in a severe asthma attack. It must be terrifying, and um, my thoughts go out to them. It really does. So I'm sorry. I'm wittering on. This is Grade Lavender. Um, oh God! I was so frightened. Right, I'm just going to take a little bit of white now and we're going to push these colours together like they're meant to be. And just sort of lighten that up. Um, yeah, I have. I don't think. I don't think I've ever felt terror like that. Um, and I honestly thought. Oh, I thought. Oh, this is it. You know. Look, look, I'm done for. And uh, gosh, yeah, I, I, um, it knocked it out of me. Obviously, I went to bed not long afterwards, and um, and slept. But uh, I woke up in a, in a real panic afterwards. It's taken sort of days to get that that sensation um, out of my system. So I'm going to go back in with Palmer Violet now, and I'm going to start to sort of lessen that off up here. Bring that round here. Because I don't want it dark like that everywhere. But we are going to, like I say, we are going to glam it up. And then back in with our grade lavender. And then anywhere that I feel is, is a bit too dark, I can use the white to knock that colour back. Okay, I need to help blend this out a little bit more. So I'm just going to come in and tickle the page with the violet. And back in with our grey lavender. And then we'll have a little bit more of the pale blue. If we go over the two, it should help to merge them a little bit better. And then we're going to bring this. We're going to bring this out. So just using the paler colours, I'm going to come out with the blue. Just so that there is some colour around our snowflakes. Just softly in the grey lavender. And then let that fade out into sort of nothingness. And then our blue again. Go over that lavender. And then we'll have a little bit more lavender around here. I will tidy this up. So we're just going to go back over it lightly now. And then I'm going to take that white and use that to blend those colours in. Particularly around the edges so it just sort of disappears. Now at the moment it won't look much. Sorry. Um, but when we add... We might add some more colour to it, but um, when we add snow to it, which we're going to, and glitter, that will stand out. So I'm just going to keep playing a bit more grey lavender in here. Go back over that blue. We'll take the blue down here a bit further now. I was going to do black on the background, but I always do black backgrounds, and I do love them. And it does really make the page pop, but I thought we needed a frosty page. So that's what I was going for. So we'll have some of this blue round here. And then, like I said, we're going to bring that out. So... I now have to tidy this up because I've made a real 
hash up here. A real mash up of this piece. So I'll just tidy that up. So um, yeah, back to school this week. It's been the children were lovely, were lovely, and they were very pleased to see me. But oh my gosh, it's knocked me for six. I'm only working a f uh, three hours a day, three and a half hours a day. But because I haven't been there for a while, it's really sort of taken it out of me. So I'm coming, coming home and throwing myself in bed. And obviously, I've I've been ill. We've had this horrible cold type thing. Um, so that that hasn't helped, but. Hopefully now, fingers crossed, and God willing, um, all the nastiness is over with and I'll be back to normal. Right, I am going to take my Prismacolor blender, I'm just going to make sure it's clean on a scrap bit of paper. And I'm, ju oops, I'm just going to blend that through. Doesn't need to be perfect because we are. I've, I've got. Um, we are going to put snowflakes, and I have got a different medium that I thought we might try. Let's just pull those in. Okay. There we go. You can see it. Yeah. So then we're going to um, bring it out round here as well. We don't need to do the whole thing, but I just want to. Obviously I'm going to go back in this, but I won't do this smoothing out and all the blending on camera because we'll be here for a long time. I'm going to bring this blue out here. So I'm using the Violet Lake for this one. Just gently. And we're going to use a little bit of the Parma Violet. Gently again. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then we'll switch to our lighter colours. So, grey lavender. And bring that down. And around that snowflake. And then our sky blue light, let's use that and bring that out. You can do as much of this as you want to, but um, I just want it sort of lightly in there so that when we put some snow in, those snowflakes stand out a little bit more. And I'm overlapping the colours. So I'm going over with going over the um, grey lavender with the sky blue light and I'll do the same here with the um, grey lavender and I'll merge that into the blue and anywhere again that it's too dark I'll get our trusty white and blend that through blend it out but like I say I don't think we need to be too precise and we need to worry too much because we are going to put well this we are going to put other stuff over it of course but um, when I've done the robins, and they're all going to be robins, just wearing different clothes, even if they're meant to be or not, that's how I'm doing it, um, this background will mute down. You know, when you've got the brighter colours, it will um, it will mute down. So, there we are. So I've shared my horrific, horrific experience, and it, gosh, it really was. It was horrible. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Oh, it was so frightening. Um, and yeah, back at school. So they've got when I arrived, all the Christmas decorations were up, and it's all Christmassy in there. Not that it's always a good time of year. A lot of um, the children that I work with, Christmas is not a good time of year, and is in and in fact, sadly, a lot of them dread Christmas. It's just not a nice time to be at home with families. Um, tragically. But um, we can only make it as pleasant as we can while we're there at school. There we go. And obviously some of them don't even celebrate Christmas, so 
but they um, still have that added concern of being out of school. Right, let me come out so you can see. So my plan is to just sort of alternate the blues and the purples and I am going to do the same in the centre around the snowflake and I might make that darker. So I can carry on with this purple, merge it in with the blue um, and I'm just sort of going to randomly put it in there and carry on bringing this softly, softly approach out with the lighter colours and I will do the same around them. So I'm not going to spend too long showing you how to do that because it is just those what four colours and it'll be up to you really how you put it down because it's just going to be random you can copy mine when I come back on you'll be able to see it on screen um, but we've got a lot to do we've got a lot of the birds to colour we've got all the background to do the owls to do the cup to do so I'm not going to spend too much time on building up that background with you that that's all I'm going to do is just merge those two different colours around so I'll go off and do that and then we can come back and focus on the forefront, the wreath and all the other elements. So I'll see you in a second. Right folks, so I have managed to do the background and I really like its subtle teeth. So there's a little bit of subtle around the outside. I might have to add to that later, but I'm going to leave it alone as it is. So I did. I have planned to do them all in robin colours, the birds, but I'm wondering if I should add a couple of like blue grey pigeons in there because he looks like a pigeon to me as does this one maybe I don't know so what I thought we'd do is start with the um, the leaves on the wreath and I've got four colours um, three of them are going to be the main colours that we use but we're going to add in a little bit more so um, our darkest one that we're going to add sparingly is cobalt turquoise then we're going to go in with um, light aqua then true green and we're going to mute that down a little bit with jade green so I know it's a um, I know it's quite a bizarre combination but um, I want them to sort of look cold rather than a warm green so um, so this is the one we're going to use sparingly and we're just going to sort of randomly add it in which is cobalt turquoise when I say randomly add it in, I mean I'm only going to put it on certain leaves. So this is our yeah cobalt turquoise, and I'm going in at the base as I always do on my leaves. Darken that up. Then I'm going in with light aqua, and I'm backtracking over that cobalt and bringing that out. And then soften it off so we can blend in the next colour, which is a true green. And I don't want a lot of that. So I'm not doing it too heavy. And then I'm going to tone that down with the muted turquoise. I'm going to go back in a little bit with that um, aqua. with too much of a line there. Okay. A little bit more of that light aqua uh, true green okay so that looks really bright and in your face which is lovely it's going to be great it's nice to have color on a page but then we're going to take away that dark one and I'm going to go in with the um, light just the three light colors so I'm going to start with light aqua then we're going to add uh, the true green and our muted turquoise and then that's just going to dampen down that whole colour situation there so the, these are our this is how I plan to do my primary leaves make the main bulk of them like that so they're sort of frosted but we get a few that are a bit brighter so um, let's do that again so I've got a uh, Aqua, light aqua. Yeah, just checking you what I was on camera. So light aqua, um, true green, isn't that pretty? 
and then turn it down with a little bit of the jade, is it jade? Yeah, jade green. And then what I've got, I know you're probably thinking, oh my god Lucy, you've lost the plot. What I've got is um, some luster polish, which is by... Um, I don't know. Let me see. It's called Snow and Ice Luster Polish. I will put a link in below. Um, and you get this sponge on the top. And then inside oh, is this gorgeous glitteriness. Now, I have tested it. And um, I'll show you just this section. This is my like prattling about practice page. And it's smooth and it doesn't change the um, paper and make it crunchy or hard. So it comes out like that. Look at that beautiful shimmer and sparkle. So what I had planned to do was take a paintbrush instead of using the sponge, because that would obviously be for big areas, would be to do our leaves and things and use a paintbrush and paint that over the leaves so that it looks like frost. So that's that's my theory and that's, so that's why they're quite bright. And colder rather than that beautiful warm sort of earthy green. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start with our cobalt turquoise this time. Put a little bit of dark in. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. Then our light aqua. And our true green. And then mute it down with the um, jade. So hopefully what it will do is um, just give a little bit more interest to the leaves instead of them all being the same. Although they're not that different Hopefully it will just sort of add that little bit more interest and dimension to our page. And you could go all out and change them completely, you know. Um, so there was lots of different greens going on. But I just liked the way this muted one looked. But And then when we get our birds done, if I ever decide how to do them, they're really going to stand out. So... Um, I've planned on, this is, look, at my, look at my practice page, I've planned on robins, but I just really feel like we need a couple of like pigeons in there. Um, he looks like a pigeon to me, and he looks like a pigeon, so I'm wondering, and so does that one, so I'm wondering whether we should just do three, but then my dilemma is, the colours I'm using for those, this is what the process is, is going through my head, so I hope you don't mind me sharing is that they're going to be very cold colours, the blues are of the um, pigeons, if I use them, and then we're going to have this warm of this robin. But I don't know. So is it going to be too much if I do them all as robins? <laughs> this is... Oh, dear. It's hard work being in my head, folks. So what I have got is some reds for the berries. So I'm going for obvious colours now until I make a decision. Um, <laughs> so I've got crimson red, I've got permanent red and I've got orange. Let me have a drink. <coughs> okay. So then we're going to colour some berries. So this will be where we bring the warmth into the page. So crimson red. Then I've got permanent red, and I'm going straight over that. I'm not fussed about the little um, highlight dot there. I'll use a Posca to go over that. And then orange. So we can start to introduce our warmer, our warmer tones. And um, I'm just wondering if that's dark enough. So this is the same colours that I will be using for the little robin 
Robin's chests. Um, I'm just going to knock back some of that orange to have less orange and more red. And I'm wondering if we need an even darker red. Let's add some Tuscan red in there. That's better. Yeah, that's better. A little bit of Tuscan red just to deepen those areas and then go back in with the crimson. There we are. Cute, huh? All right, let's do those again now we've got that new colour. Let's choose another one. So, nice big one down here. So, I'm going in with Tuscan, Tuscan red. And then um, crimson over that. We haven't got much space on these berries, but there we go. Um, what is this? Permanent red. And then our orange. There. Let's have a look. So, already we're, we're, the page is really picking up. So, I know that these little fellas, I want those as robins, without a doubt. This little Look at his little fat tummy, he's so cute. So I want him as a robin. So why don't we go ahead and do that? I've got the colours ready, I think. We've got these colours that we've just used for the berries as that's going to be their chest. And then I've got these colours for his, let me see how I did it, for his, right, for his body. So, if we go in with the colours we've just used, so, Tus uh, yeah, Tuscan Red, and I'm going to go round the outside of him, round the outside of his face here. Maybe we need to come in just a tad, how about that? Um, and round his hat, not too much of that. Then I'm going to go in with the crimson. So I'm working down the list that's on the screen. I'm going to bring that just round there slightly. A bit of crimson. Make sure we've got enough of that over that Tuscan. Then the permanent red. Bring that right round his little eye. Like that. And then a little bit of orange coming down here. Like that. <laughs> Cute. Okay, and then we're going to switch to our browns. <clears throat> right, so I've got chocolate. And we're going to put that in the darkest areas first. So under his hat. And round there where we put the dark red. And we're going to do a little bit at the base of each wing. Uh, we can do a little bit round here. I'm going to put a little bit at the tip of each of the feathers. Like that. Cute. And then we're taking, um, then I've got, um, what is this? Light umber. Got to bring that in. Like that. And then we've got a little bit of um, ginger root. So we're going with a little bit of ginger root. So he's not too dark and we still get that little bit of detailing that we've put in there on his wing. Okay, we'll do that on his tail. So chocolate, bring that down. Chocolate, um, light amber, and then the ginger root. Okay, and then on his belly, we've got 
um, I've got, we might need to add a little bit of the gingery, I've got seashell pink and I've got eggshell. So I'm going to go in with the seashell pink. We can drag that orange in, that's fine, Does, that will work well at blending it. Get that prisma smush on that orange to pull it out. And then we'll switch to the seashell, I hope we've got this right, yeah, around the right way. So he's got a, a pale tummy. Need a little bit more of that seashell pink. In there. So cute. And then our seashell. What is that? Yeah, seashell pink and then eggshell, sorry. Okay, I might want that a little bit darker, so let's take a little bit of light umber and just shadow that. Shadow around his wing and then go back in with that um, seashell and pull that down. Now, did I have... I thought I had, maybe not. So I think now I need a little bit more orange coming down here. I thought it might have spread out a bit more, but it didn't. So we'll just pull that down a little bit more. And we've got one cute little robin. Should we do that on this one? His partner, their partners, these two, I've decided. Okay, so chocolate, light umber, and ginger root. So... We have to do his face first. <laughs> Goodness me, Lucy. Okay, Tuscan Red. So we're going to do the same around this little face. I'm going to put dark around here and around there. Um, crimson Red. Excuse my phone. Permanent Red. I'm going to bring that down a little bit there. Around his eye. I love his little fat tummy, this one. And then bring in that orange. Can afford to even bring that down even more, really. There we go. <laughs> They're so cute. Okay, and then we're going to do the same as we did. So chocolate. We're going to come down a little bit one side of the wing and on the tail. Yeah, and then at the base of each of those little feathers, round his head, round that eye. Like that. And then our light umber to blend that out. We'll put a little bit round here of the light umber like we did on the last bird just for a bit of shadowing and then we'll go in with our ginger root and pull that through and they start to come to life oh I didn't yeah I didn't use ginger root did I, I my apologies we should have switched to the other two colours but it's okay, it doesn't matter. So I've got a little bit of ginger root in there. And then we'll switch to our, our seashell pink. It won't hurt, They'll, they all blend together, they're all that sort of earthy colour. So Okay, and then um, eggshell. Didn't do his tail, so that's ginger root on his tail. And then I'm going to go back with the orange and just pull that down a bit further. <laughs> Do 
two little fat robins. <laughs> so what I'm definitely going to do is all the leaves the way I've shown you um, and just sort of every three leaves or so I'm going to add a darker leaf in and then I'm going to leave this bird I think I'm going to leave these three until I've coloured these as, as um, robins and the red on this one will just come round there the rest of it will be that soft colour I think I'm going to leave those three because I might do those as pigeons. I will see. So I'm going to go off and colour all those leaves and all the berries and um, these two as mm. yeah so the red on this one let me just show you we'll come back in. I'm just thinking the red on this one I'll do round here. So I'll bring that dark round there. A dark red. Then work through the list as usual. Just slightly different. Like that. And then this red. And leave enough room to squash that orange in. So each of them will be slightly different. Let's take our browns now. So we'll do the wings and the feathers. So um, his tail. So take our dark, our chocolate. Squash that in a bit. I'm going to do the same as I did with the other birds. So a little bit of chocolate there. And at the tip of it, each feather. And okay, round his face as well. So chocolate round here, under the hat. I can actually bring that down. There we go, make that dark. And that bit dark under there because it's behind him. Um, and then go in with our light umber. I don't want too much on that because I want to keep his chest sort of soft colour like theirs. Um, a little bit of blend out that chocolate with a little bit of light umber. Okay. You can always add to it. And then let's take our ginger root, see if we've got enough. So I'm going to go over all the bits we've already coloured dark. Just so each of these little, oh, I didn't do it here did I? So we need the light umber. Each of these little birds, although they've got the same colour, they're going to be just slight, look slightly different, which is cool. Okay, ginger root in there. We'll add a little bit like we did to the other bird because that seemed to work quite well putting that ginger root in. Put it on his wing. Okay, then his tummy, we used these two colours, didn't we? Seashell pink. I'm going to go around where I put that light umber and then add in the um, eggshell. Okay, going back in with a little bit of light umber. So I hadn't intended to do that whole bird, but it just happened. So at least you've got that one that's a little different. So this one I'm definitely going to do as a little robin because he's got a little fat tummy like those. Um, so I'm going to do him the same as we did those. And then I might, I'm thinking that I might do those as 
like I say, pigeon colours. But until I've got that finished and the leaves done, I don't really know um, whether I should or I shouldn't, if that makes any sense. Do you know what I mean? I'm very indecisive. <laughs> so I'm going to go and colour the bits that I've said, finish that little robin off, and then we'll be back and we'll have a look. I hopefully will have made a decision. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a minute. OK, guys, I've got as far as this and I'm getting myself in a tiz over it because I... What, what I was thinking was like turtle dove. I, I said pigeon earlier. I was thinking like turtle dove colours. However, I think if I throw the uh, cold blues in amongst these birds, it's just going to look weird. So I am going to do them all the same. They are going to be robin colours and I'm going to incorporate other colours into their hats and scarves and things. So I've done all the leaves and what I did to sort of take out some of the difficulty in choosing, because I'm not very good at doing random, I put the um, darker green, the cobalt turquoise, sorry, in the bigger leaves. So it just took out the choice there so that I didn't have to worry. So I'm going to use cobalt turquoise and I'm going to use um, light aqua and we're going to do the um, branches in that because I think I might put stickles over them to make them look icy. So I'm taking the cobalt turquoise and I want um, it to, that colour to show through if I put stickles, because I'm thinking silver stickles. So just those two colours, which keeps it nice and cool looking and um, incorporates those leaf colour leaf colours. Like that. What do you think, folks? What would you have done? I see so many wonderful pictures out there. Um, and it's quite daunting when you come on camera. And um, I'm just trying to think where to go. So we'll just add some... Yeah, it's quite daunting when you come on camera and you sort of expose yourself when you've seen so many... Um, probably should have worded that better. Um, so many incredible coloured pictures out there. So that's probably why I spend so much time agonising over colours. But it can make or break a picture, can't it? So if you um, choose the wrong colours, it, it, it is make or break on your picture, I think, anyway. So I'm going to stick with these and the... Um, robin colours for our birds. I think that's going to look cool and then if we stick all that and then we're going to put some of this sparkly stuff over the leaves and maybe the berries to make it look frosty. It's going to look awesome. So and then our little um, owls down here can be um, the greys and browns and we'll pep things up a bit with whatever clothes they're wearing. Hats and what not. There. That's going to look so cool. Look at that. So it's really tying that together using those two colours. So um, I'm faffing now. I'm putting it off. I'm putting off doing it. Aren't I? Whereas I'm just going to go for it. Let's just do it because... I don't think I'm going to change my mind. So we're going to get out my robin colours again. So I will finish the, the branches off camera with those two colours, the cobalt turquoise and the light aqua. We're going to go back to our robin colours now. So this is a Tuscan red, the same as we did before. And I'm going to bring that round here. I'm going to mind his little glasses. And we're going to have a little bit of that under here too, I think. Like that, then in with our crimson red, and what we can do is bring that bib down, make that more orangey. Should we come in a little bit closer? There we go. Not we're too close, so you focus on the pencil instead. So we'll bring that one round his eye. 
Yeah, so like I say, t turtle doves is what I was thinking of, not pigeons. Why would we have pigeons in a Christmassy picture? I don't know. Unless it was like a city centre or something. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't get it. I think the the, col the cooler colours will be better. I'm just going to add a little bit more of that um, permanent red. I think the cooler colours will be better as accents rather than... A main character in the page. So pulling that down and then I'm going to put orange in here so that his little bib is orange like that. And then back in with our red. There we are. Be a bit more of that darker red, fill up that white of the paper. Okay, I think I've made the right decision. Um, there is a second page, so if I um, I'm not entirely happy, I can change it. So in with our browns. So this is our chocolate. Same as we've done with the other birds. I'm just recapping really, just so you can see. Um, do the tip of their little wings, little feathers rather. Like that. In our chocolate. And we'll bring that up a little bit higher, the chocolate on these ones. There we go. Then in with our light umber. So, have you done your Christmas shopping yet, folks? Have you done any Christmas shopping? I have to confess, I haven't. Um, I am just going to buy for the little fella, my grandson, I think this Christmas. Um, because obviously I've gone part-time, so I don't have the money like I did have. So, uh, and it's all about the children, really, isn't it? Making it magical for them. I just want him to grow up and remember Christmases at Nana and Grandad's, you know, make them special. If I do buy presents like for my um, two boys and that, it would just be something little. And me and my husband, we probably won't. I mean, I'm a spoiled brat and I have stuff all year round, so. Sorry, that was ginger root, so I'm going to do that whole, do him in ginger root. Looks quite cool, doesn't it? Just the ginger root. I like that. Yeah, cool. And then the other two birds will be done. Should we do this one together? He's pretty self explanatory, isn't he, compared to the other ones we've done? Let's do this one together and then we'll move on. Um, okay, so he's probably pretty self explanatory as well. Darker colour around his, the edge of his face and under the, her hat. I say her, could be whoever it wants to be, and then working through our reds again, I haven't done the beaks yet, obviously I have to decide what colour I'm going to do the beaks yet, and we're going to bring a bit of that orange down here. Like this. Put a little bit of the um, permanent red in there too. Just round that bow. There we go. I have to tidy that up. I've made a mess around there. Look. There we go. Tidy that up. And should we do the red on this one together? Because then the brown just happens, doesn't it? So got a little bit of thing on his face but I am going to, wrong colour, I am going to bring that right up round there on this one, a little bit round his scarf like that, got that on his eye, I can use a bit of Posca to go over that, and then in 
with our other colours. <laughs> yeah, I think I've made the right decision. Um, I just think it might have been a little overwhelming. So we can bring a little bit of this red down here. Not much, but just bring a little bit in. Just so it doesn't stop dead round his scarf. And then we mingle that orange in. Blend that in and just pull a little bit of that orange down, like we do with the other birds. And we'll come out and have a look. Okay, let's come out and have a look now. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm much happier than with that. And then we'll incorporate some bright colours. So I'm going to go off and finish those. Um, now we've done the reds, you know where to put the browns and um, the colours that we used. Um, finish the... What is it? These bits. <laughs> the wreath bits off. And then we'll come back. Alright, I'll see you in a sec. Okay guys, here we are. This is the third day of filming this page. Um, I don't know why it's... Why it's been so hard to put it together for me I don't know so what I've got is a combination of green proper green combination of purple and a combination of blue for all our little accessories so our hats and our scarves and whatnot so here I said these were a couple I think they're probably twins so I might do those two I don't know I don't know what I am going to do is the top hats in the blue so let me bring you in before I change my mind and let me just get it down on paper. So let's do, I can move all this stuff. Let's do this nice big top hat first. So I've got a really beautiful combination here which we've used before on the channel. And that is denim blue, china blue and non-photo blue. So I'm going in with denim. And I'm going to do the dark at this side and I'm going to put the denim up here so we get a nice deep blue going there and then in with our china blue didn't want to use an awful lot of blue because I don't want to drown out the background but it's okay for some accessories, I do think. And then our non-photo blue I've got, which is a nice bright blue. So we can have a combination of the colds and the warms. There we go. Right, back to denim, and we'll do underneath here. just a little bit at the sides up here we've still got their beaks to do okay then the china and then the non-photo blue run that all the way along there we go a little top hat and um, we can do, let's do a scarf as well so we don't get confused. So denim, we'll put denim here as well. Let's do these edge bits first and then we'll work out the other colour, where the other colours need to go rather. There we go, uh, china blue. Sorry if my hand's in the way. There we go, a bit of china blue. Bring that right down. And then our non-photo. It's a really pretty combination. And 
and we can just work out what where we want the colour on the knots. So I will put the dark at the bottom and come up the side a little bit. Then our next colour and then the non photo blue. There. So actually I think that looks really cute. So I need to pick out Let's do um, the other top hat. Maybe not. Let's do this little hat here in the blue. So denim. I'm going to do the dark bit round the little bauble. The little pom-pom on the top. And then the next blue. And then the non-photo blue. Okay, now. Let's fill that little gap in there. Then I'm going to take just a grey, which is 30% cool grey, and I'm just going to fill that in. And then I'm going to come in with a white Posca and sort of fluff it up. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's do the band on his head, on the hat. 70% cool grey and 30% cool grey. So we'll just give him a little grey band so he's all smart there we go nice and simple okay right now I've got greens um, let's have a look at these two these are just two greens I've got um, I don't know what that is I think it's Prussian green and apple green they'll be on the screen Let's do um, let's do her hat. So I'm going in with the Prussian green. And then finish that off with a little bit of apple. Like that. And we'll do the little bow around her neck as well, in green. So she's all coordinated. There we go. What a little sweetheart. Okay, what else can we do? Green. Um, let's have this one. Let's have his little hat in the green. So Prussian green. Fade that out into apple green. And then we'll put that 30% grey again. We'll put that down. Like that. And then we're going to, like I say, we're going to posca that so that it makes it look a little bit fluffy. Now the other combination I've got is some purples. So some more warm tones. So I've got um, black grape, dahlia purple and lavender. So let's do this one in the black grape. And then dahlia purple. just leave a little bit of room for the lavender. So we're kind of picking out colours that we've got in the background so we can have a bit of unity. So let's do his hat in the purples. So Dahlia purple. Nope, sorry, black grape. Put that under there. Then Dahlia purple. Dahlia purple on each side there, and then our lavender. 
There we go. And we can use our two greys for the little bit on the the little band on the hat. That's a simple one. Right. So I've done two two greens, two purples, two blues, and now I'm going to be having to incorporate these colours. So I think I think we'll do green for the main colour. I'm just going to sharpen them because he's quite <coughs> excuse me. The spaces are quite tiny. So I think we'll put green for the main colour, so uh, round the diamonds, let's do that. So that's our Prussian green into apple green, like that. Then we'll take our 30% grey for the little fluffy bits. And the reason why I'm colouring it all is then it will show up when we put the white Posca on. Okay, and what colour should we do in the middle? Mm. I'm going purple, I think. So I think I quite like this combo. So I'm just going to take the middle one, which is the Dahlia purple. It's going to have disgusting Christmas hat, <laughs> green and purple, because why not? There we go. And um, we'll have a purple scarf. So, wrong colour. We need the dark for her. And up there. Leave a little space for that lavender. Dark here. And round that side. Then our mid colour. camera. Okay, and then our light tone. <laughs> so cute. And like that, it's done. We'll have the purple over here too, on the little band. Um, a little bit there, of the dark. Then the mid-tone. We're just going to fill that in with the mid-tone. Then we use the mid-tone in the middle and the lightest one. There. Right, so now we've got butterfly and beaks. Well, beaks should be fairly simple. So let's go in with... Um, let's go in with the chocolate and... Let's use a little bit of, if I can find it, look at there we go, chocolate and a bit of putty for their beaks. So we'll have chocolate like this and then we'll come in with a little tiny bit of putty just to blend that out. There we are. And we can do the same on their legs too. So we can have chocolate Bring out those little feet. And a little tiny bit of putty. There. So we'll do all the beaks like that and all their little legs like that. And then we've got these fellows down here. So I'm going to introduce some new browns. So we're going to have... I'm going to use that putty, I think, and we're going to have, um, I don't know what that is, I think maybe dark brown, it will be on the screen, I'll work it out, 
dark brown we'll use burnt ochre light umber and then that putty we might bring in I don't know let's just see so if we start with this beautiful little lady down here and we're gonna fill in round her eyes and from her beak out like that let's pull that right up to our hat actually and then we'll have a little bit of dark round here and there okay and then let's go in with that um, burnt ochre that should be quite nice oh yes very cute Blend that out, put a little bit over there. <laughs> Alright, we need a little bit more of that. Um, maybe dark brown, I think it's called. Maybe not, I'm not sure. But it'll be on the screen. It's um, 947. Just pull that out a little bit more, just so it doesn't look so linear um, we can put a little bit of the light umber in just so it helps it blend a bit better okay that's cute very cute right now I'm going to try I don't want anything so dark so maybe we should use some of the colours that we had before so, yeah, maybe light umber round the eyes. Put light umber in, just lightly, and then we'll go in with that putty and pull that out. Yeah, that's cute. That's cute. I'll work the eyes out in a minute. And we're going to have to put the background round here that we used initially. Going to have to bring that round. Oh, she's cute. Look at her. So we'll do the same on our belly. So we'll have a little bit of the light umber in where the shadow areas will be. A little bit of light umber. There we go. And round here. And then our putty, putty beige, on her tummy as well. <laughs> and then we'll go back to our our dark one, which was 947. And we'll do her wings the same as we've done the others. So dark at the tip of those little wings. Bring that up actually there. And same on this one. Okay, then we'll go in with the um, burnt ochre. Same here. <clears throat> and then we'll use a little bit of that putty just around there. And then we'll do the same with the dark combination around her legs. So We'll bring that out. <laughs> um, and then 
burnt ochre. Yeah, I might get it right in a minute. Fade that out. Okay, and then just the putty to help smush it together. There we go. Alright, and we used chocolate, didn't we, for the feet. So a little bit of chocolate for the feet, just so it's not so dark. A bit of chocolate. It's a bit more red in it than and then um, putty. <laughs> and the same on this one. <laughs> Did you make me giggle? Right, we can do the other feet while we're here. Okay, and some putty. What a cute little couple. Right, okay. Get in there now. You get to the point, you just have to be brave and go for it. And we'll do the same colours for this one, but we'll just do him uh, differently, maybe. So let's put in the burnt ochre. Put it round here. And round his eyes. He's not looking particularly impressed, is he? Or she. And then we'll use the putty. So we haven't put in the um, 947. We've just used the burnt ochre and the putty on this little guy. And then now we can bring in the dark so we can fit the 947 in under there with a little bit of that burnt ochre just so it shows up around his feet and in the real shadows around the bottom of his leg there under his scarf and a little bit there like that burnt ochre and putty and then we used a tiny bit of light umber didn't we for the shadow on the belly so we'll do that just really lightly. There we go. And then putty. There. Our cute little couple. Right, let's take. Right, let me just see. Um, a bit of scrap paper. Let's do um, the carmine red and the orange that we used on the robins and we'll do their beaks. So I'm going to put carmine red down one side of each of their beaks. And then we'll go in with a bit of orange. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we've done the beaks of the birds and the legs of the birds, so um, what colour should we do? Let's bring down, let's have some blue because we haven't got much blue up there, so let's do some blue. Let's do, let's do this hat in blue this time. So we've got um, the, us the same combination, denim, china and non-photo. So if we go in with... Um, Let's do denim here. I'm just going to go straight over the diamonds on this one, I think. And I'll go over with Posca if I want to add it. So that's denim there, and we'll put denim around here as well. Bring that up a bit to keep that shape. Then in with the china blue.
Oh, he's cute. Okay, and then the non-photo. <laughs> and we'll put a little bit of that 30% grey on the hat, on the pom-pom. Could we can fuzz that up then with a little bit of white Posca and we'll give her, him, a blue scarf to match. A little bit of that non-photo blue in the centre there. <laughs> and I'm going to do these bits. So that's going to be behind, so that'll be darker there. And we'll do it from this edge here. And then there we go. Oh, they're so cute. So, have you got anything nice planned for the weekend? I have made it through my first week back at work. Goodness only knows how, because I'm exhausted, even though, like I said, I've reduced my hours. I'm just exhausted. Oh, gosh, that's so cute. Look at that. I think we're going to make her purple. Are we? Yeah, I think we are. I like the purple combo. Um, yeah, um, so I've made it through my first week back, I'm just exhausted, but then I, I'd had a lot of time off, haven't I, so it, it only stands to reason that, really, that I was going to be tired. Um, and then I've got the grandbaby coming, the little fella, again, always comes at the weekend, on a Friday. I didn't see him last weekend because I was... We were ill with this horrible cold, so I've missed him. I can't wait to see him. And he's got, he's lost his bottom two teeth, but he's got wobbly top teeth as well now. So that means they're re he's really growing up. It's scary. He giggles at me when I say to him, you've got to stop growing up. We'll stop that right now, and he just giggles at me. Do you know who they remind me of? I don't know why, because it's nothing to do with it, really. I suppose it's the hat, I'm not sure. But, you know, in Toy Story, when um, the little girl's playing with um, Buzz and he's given up all hope of escape, and he calls her Mrs Nesbitt. <laughs> That's what the, that rem they remind me of. Oh, anyway, Mrs Nesbitt. Maybe they're Mr and Mrs Nesbitt. Um... I might just put a little bit of um, putty over her eyes, I think. A little bit of putty over there and drag some of that brown in. Leave a little bit of white. Bit more white back in. There we go. <laughs> okay, she's got purple hat. We have... Um, blue, just because she's next to him, we'll have blue, um, we'll have a blue banner or ribbon on her hat. Like that. Then we can bring down the greens, so if we use... Um, the same colours that we used for the leaves up here. We could do her, her little cup. So if we use cobalt turquoise for a cup of tea. Cobalt turquoise. Um, light aqua. That will bring these colours down here. Maybe we could do that on the big cup as well. There we go. And jade. 
And then we'll add a little bit of light umber in there for her cup of tea. She likes it strong, clearly. Okay, two little owls. Now I reckon, I'm reckoning, I'm wondering if we should do the cup. Let's do that. Let's do the cup in the leaf colours and we'll bring that down. So I'm using cobalt turquoise again. I'm going to have to carefully go around all these little bits and bobs, aren't I? Cobalt turquoise. There we go, up this side. We'll put a little bit of it this side too. Just help us keep that sort of, that shape that we want. And we'll do the saucer underneath here. Like that. Then the light aqua. Oh, we had true green, didn't we? I've missed a colour out. I'm going to go over them. I will poscarise them. Okay. making sure that's all blended in. Bring that round here a little bit. Bring it out a little bit more. And then we had, uh, was it? Yeah, true green. Didn't we? We had a little bit of true green in the leaves. We'll go back over it. Just put a little bit of that over this side. Then um, over that with the jade. That's correct. There we go. And that just helped to tone that all down. Bit of true green down here. And then in with the jade. Okay. I'm just going to um Sort this edge out a little bit. Just going to go back in really lightly with that cobalt turquoise. Just to help that blend along. Same this side. There we go. Back in with our light aqua now. more of our uh, true green and then our jade okay then we can have true green around the edge here maybe a little bit at the front there And then jade over that for our saucer. Okay. I'm going to worry about the inside of the saucer in a minute. Let's take our reds that we used. Um, a 
come in for this teeny tiny little rose. We use the reds that we used for the um, robins and bring that down onto this flower. So Tuscan red. Didn't have mahogany, did I? Did I? No, I had carmine red. What was the other one? Here, let me see. I had. Okay, Tuscan red. Crimson red, permanent red, I know we did, didn't we? Yeah, permanent red and orange. So let's do that, um, this little rose. So let me see, right, I'm going to start with um, our darkest. And then we'll work up the petals with it. I don't know if I want the orange though. We'll see. Let's try a little bit of orange around the edge. Yeah, that works. Let's just go for that. So I'm going to put the dark in the centre there. Just working up the colours again. Make that centre a bit dark. I'll go in with Posca afterwards to sort of identify edges and whatnot. But I'm just trying to bring down colours that we've um, we've already used in the page. So I'm going to make that one big petal and that one. Okay. And let's go in with that orange. I think that orange is going to help to break that up. We can use the Posca for some highlights and things. Okay, looks gross. <laughs> All right, um, green. So I want. Let's put those greens in for the holly leaves. So the Prussian green, I think it is. 109 and here I suppose we could have done them a completely different colour but let's do that and then apple green Let's go back to our aqua combination. So cobalt turquoise. Let's do the handle. I think we should stick to the same sort of colours since we've got that orangey red flower. Light aqua. A little bit of true green. So our same combo. And then jade. And then we'll put the cobalt turquoise in there and there for the saucer, light aqua. And just bring that up, I think. We'll just have the light aqua and not the true green. In there. All right, and we'll use chocolate and light umber for the tea inside the cup. Chocolate, or it could be a coffee, whatever your fancy takes. Okay, there we go. Right. Now, what's left? The little flower on her hat. Um, we can use those greens again. So we'll use a Prussian green. Are you on camera? Yeah, Prussian green. We'll fill the tiny little leaves in with Prussian green. And then apple green.
if we've got any other colours that, apart from the browns that I haven't used, they can be apple green. Uh, no, we'll go back to our reds then. And we'll use a crimson red. Orange in the centre. And then our permanent red around the edge. There you go, Mrs Nesbitt. <laughs> right, let me come out and have a look. So, oh, here we are. I have to do the blue-purple combination round the birds. So, I can't remember what we used. Blue-violet lake. Yes, that's it. Blue-violet lake. Sky blue light. And then... Um, Grey lavender and... Lilac, what was it? Lilac, let's see, is it lilac too pink? Lilac, right, so right, we'll go blue under here. So we're going to use the blue violet lake to put the shadow in. And then the sky blue light to kind of, so we can merge them. bit more dark under there, cover that up. Okay, then we'll use the purple under here, so lilac. Make sure they merge in. There we go. And the grey lavender. Kind of just follow that shape. There we are. And then we can use... I hope that's not been blurry. A little bit of white. Just to... No, that was my phone. Oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> Oh, it's fine. Thank goodness. Oh. All right. Oh, butterfly. What the heck are we going to do the butterfly in? I think oranges, only just... Where's our reds? Yeah, I think the orange-red combination. Um, I think it's got to be. So, crimson-red. Let's go in... Here, crimson red here. Then our permanent red. I think you get the picture. I think you know what's coming. And then our orange. There we go. Same on this wing. Has to be, doesn't it? Really, and we'll bring that down here. Gosh, you are, yeah, you are. You're just a little bit far away. There we go. Permanent red. Gonna have to posca those bits, I think. And then orange. Yeah, I'm gonna have to posca those. They're so tiny. And my hands aren't steady enough to go round all that. Okay, then we'll use our We'll use um, that 947 brown. Let's come down this side. 947 and then light umber for his body. And a little bit of putty, I think. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of putty. And then, I reckon... Hmm. I'm going to put blue in there, so I think, let's take, let's take China blue, 
put that in because blue and orange go really well together. I was going to use a Posca, but you won't. I won't be able to match the colour. So China blue and non-photo blue. Okay. So I forced myself into making decisions there. I didn't stop to think. So what have I got to do? I've got to go and finish the legs. Here we go. It was Mrs Nesbitt. Mr and Mrs Nesbitt down the bottom. I've got to go and finish the legs. Um, and the beaks. And then we are going to come back and, and sort out the snowflakes and the background. That looks gross. But um, I think once we get some Posca on there, hopefully that won't look so bad. All right, my lovelies, I'll see you in a sec. All right, folks, I've done all of the legs and beaks. And I'm going to take a little bit of that sky blue light. Just a tiny bit. This is the fun bit now. This is the best bit of colouring a page. Sky blue light and I'm just going to put a tiny bit in this little fella's glasses. There we go. Right. Now, I put a little bit of white around the flower um, on the cup just to see what it'd look like because I really wasn't happy with how it looked. And I'm just going to put some little dots in around the handle just to break up that green. Put a little bit in the saucer too. Like that. And then we're going to fluff up the hats. So I'm going to keep the, put little strokes in and keep them all going in the same direction. Just some little fluffy, fluffy jizz. <laughs> Just some tiny. Tiny little strokes like that just to make the hats look um, fluffy. And um, like I say, I'm going to just keep them going all in the same direction. Like this. So wherever we've got fluff, we can do that. Yeah, so have you got your tree and your decorations up yet, people? Um, I was just thinking that um, this weekend, I wonder if I should do that with the small fella. That'd be good fun, wouldn't it? Put the Christmas tree up with Nana. Well, it'd be good fun for him. I'm not sure that <laughs> I might need therapy afterwards, but, <laughs> you know, as Nanas, you have to do this stuff, don't you? Okay, we've still got that um, new medium that I want to try on the page. We've got a little bit more that needs fluff over here. I'm just going to try not to put my hand in everything. A um, little bit that needs fluff up here. we go. Alright, now our berries need a little bit of highlights, so we're just going to give them a little dot. My hand's going to do the whole shaky shaky thing. Very frustrating. And then I've got a jewel metallic which you can probably have seen on the page. Um, which I'm going to colour the snowflakes in before we put that sparkly medium on there. Now, I've tried it on that really cheap copy paper and it actually does not wrinkle the page. So, I'm quite excited to use it. Come on hand, you can do it. 
Oh, very frustrating. Okay, a couple more over here. There we go. Right, butterfly. I'm going to put a couple of little dots on the butterfly. Oh, God, my hand. So annoying. Just break that up a little bit. There we are. Okay. I've got a flower there that I haven't coloured in. Oh, that's annoying. Um, let's go blue. So we'll take China blue. I've had enough now <laughs> of choosing colours. So a bit of China blue and a little bit of non-photo, isn't it, that we were using. There we go. Right, now, the big snowflake in the middle. This is um, a Pentel dual metallic hybrid and it is um, blue, grey, so metallic, blue and silver. So I tested it on this page. Oh my gosh, look at that. Isn't that just delicious? Just beautiful. And then we're going to put um, stickles over it. So I'm going to put st silver stickles, I think, over this. So um, I just want a colour on there as an undertone, really. So you could use anything you want. Anything sparkly, or you could just leave it white and go round the the edge. Um, take the black out, the black outline out, maybe. But I thought this was a an appropriate frosty colour to show through our stickles. And then I'm going to put a little bit of that frosting. Um, this stuff. Cosmic Shimmer, isn't it? Cosmic Shimmer Lustre Polish, and it's called Snow and Ice Lustre Polish. I'm going to put that on the leaves. And then we'll put some snowflakes in. And then we've done our first Christmassy page. And I couldn't have picked one that had more detail to do with you in, so... I don't know why it drove me so mad trying to choose all the colours, but it did. But I think it's cute. I think it's came out. i tell you what I would love to do if anyone out there is still interested in um, the books. Um, we've been colouring in Lizzie Mary Cullen's books. I've done one every single year, I think. Well, for the past three at least, I think, we've done a Lizzie Mary Cullen page on her Christmas book. I'd love to do one in there. Um, if not, I'll just do it by myself. Uh, we've got... Um, do you want to see the uh, Joshua Dunbar? Do you want one done in there? The little, um, the little tiny pocket size one. Now this is going to look um, not great until we've got that uh, stickles over it. But just remember, it's just an under colour. It's pretty though. Beautiful colour. If you can pick up on that gorgeous sparkle that it gives, these pens. Yeah, so we've got Josh, Joshua Dunbar. Um, what else is there? I don't know. Okay, you don't really need to see me colouring all this. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> in true fashion, is go off and I'm going to, with this dual metallic, colour all the snowflakes in and then I'll let it dry and we'll come back and we'll put the um, this lustre on it and the silver uh, stickles together and, um, yeah, we'll have a finished page. All right, my lovely, see you in a sec. Okay, that's dry, but before I do the um, 
sparkling up. Let's put some snow on. So I've got three different size Poskas just because I'm rubbish at doing random dots and different sizes. So I've got um, 0.7 mil and that has the clear clip on it. Then I have um, two of those. That's no good, is it? I'm looking for the little fine one. Where's my... Oh, why, people? Why? Where's that gone, then? OK, so I've only got two. <laughs> That's very frustrating. <laughs> Hang on. Got one here. Let's use a new one. So, let me start that again. So, I've got the um, 0.7mm which has the clear clip on it if you're looking to buy them. Then I've got the tiny mill which is 0.9 to 1.3 and has the black clip on it. Um, that's that one. And then I've got a uh, 1.8 to 2.5 mil. Um, okay, so let's just, I'm going to take the big fat one and I'm randomly going to put some snow in it. That will then bring out that tiny bit of shading that we did in the background. Um, our white will then show up. Which is why I put them there and just sort of blended that out. These will give me the bigger dots that I want, the bigger bits of snow. There we go. And then we'll come in with the next one down, which is not activated because it's new. Come on! But you know we're busy. It's Christmas. We've got lots of things to do. Yeah, I haven't even started Christmas shopping. Gosh. I've got another week at school. There we go. Um, yeah, another week at school to go. This will give us a different size dot. Um, well, I've got, I think we break up on the Tuesday actually from school. So anything I, um, anything I get for the little fella will be ordered online, I think. So I've got to get a wiggle on with that because of getting delivery slots you know, for delivery. Even Amazon gets rammed, doesn't it, this time of year and, and can't get the get them out to you. Right, and then the last one is the this one, which has got an even finer tip on it. And I'm just going to put a load of those in. There we go. So I have to do this first before we put any of the glittery stuff on, because I'll have to let that dry. can really go to town with this one. Let's make sure we've got enough up here. All right. Oh, hang on. Let's put some more in there. There's not much there going on. See, once you start dotting, it's hard to stop. It's an addiction. <laughs> Addicted to dotting. Okay, right, stop. I can always come back to it. Right, so this stuff that I keep banging on about, I'm not going to use that you get like a big sponge, but obviously that's going to take over. So what I've got is just a little paintbrush and let's come in and what I want to do is put some frosting on these leaves so I'm just going to dip a tiny bit on my brush and then I'm going to pick out those big leaves and put some frosting on it. Now that this would be great for um, double sided books because it dries flat you're not going to have like the stickle bumps um, I hope you'll be able to pick up on that gorgeous shimmer I'll lift it up so I'm not going to put them on all of the leaves, just those big ones. OK, 
Can you see that? Oh, it's just delicious. And it's even more sparkly when it's dry. So, I did show you, I think, at the beginning of the video. Too much on my brush. Yeah, so we'll just have a little bit of frosting on the bigger leaves. Okay. So make sure that you wash your brush off afterwards because it is like um it is like a a gel it will dry hard and ruin your brush. Okay. That one got yeah, that's got some on. So now if I tilt it backwards, look, can you see that shimmer? <gasps> Isn't it beautiful? Right. Now I've got two stickles here. I've got silver. And then I've got diamond, my favourite. So silver I'm going to put on the big flake in the centre. So fingers crossed this works, folks, and I don't fluff it up. So this is why I wanted colour underneath. Just so that I can um, get the basic shape in silver without having to worry about... Um, all the little tiny spaces that would be really difficult to... Although it seems to be doing quite well. But I, yeah, I just wanted that um, undertone of that metallic blue, because it's so pretty. And then we'll put this silver effect over the top. You could go do this with loose glitter. If you had a glitter pen, that would work. Uh, a glitter pen, a glue pen. Um, the quickie glue pens are quite good. Got one of those. So just blobbing a little bit on and then using the nozzle to drag the colour out. A bit more on that one. So that's why I wasn't so fussed about um, the colour not being smooth or anything like that because I knew I was going to put this silver over the top. I'm going to blob that on and spread that out. There we are. Real showstopper. Okay. And then for the little ones. Have I got it all? So, so we've got, let me tilt it towards the light. Look at that, can you see? The silver stickles is just out of this world. And then for the little ones, I'm going to put the diamond on it. So, stickles diamond. And uh, it's, more, it's much more subtle, but still very sparkly. So I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to... Squeeze a little bit on and drag it, that colour out. Can you see that? No, you couldn't. Here we go. Do it on this one. So I can squeeze into the centre and drag that colour out. Just so that they're impressively sparkly. And that's what I love about Christmas pages, that you can go overboard. The addiction for sparkly things is always justified at Christmas. Right, let's turn us round and do this one. Be a bit more cautious with this one. And then that dual metallic underneath if there's any spots that don't get the glitter. That's got enough glitter by itself to look beautiful. Okay. Let's put, I want to put some snow I think round Mr and Mrs Nesbitt. <laughs> There we go, just a few, just 
just a few little bits of snow falling on the Nesbits. And then they can go off and enjoy their Christmas. Right, and that's the same one, I've picked up the wrong one. Here we go. One large one. There you go, Mr and Mrs Nesbit. <laughs> so if I lift it up, so hopefully you can see that um, there. I had it, there we go. The shimmer on the leaves. There's the sparkly snowflake. Once that dries up, be even brighter. And you could, I could now go round with a white Posca and take out the black lines, but um, over, there's, a, there's such a thing as overkill, folks, and you know what I'm like. So if we come out, here we go. Here's our Christmas wreath with um, Mr. and Mrs. Nesbit, <laughs> a cup of tea. There we go. And our shimmery frosted leaves. I hope you like it. Um, it was a labour of love, I have to say. I don't know why I found it so difficult to get the colours, but in the end, like when I came home from work today, I was like, Lucy, just pick up the colours and go for it. Instead of, instead of faffing about with it and worrying. Um, and actually, I think it's really cute. I would have probably made, maybe changed the cup, but I think with the white um, Posca on it, I think it's come out all right, actually. And we can even afford more snowflakes. Um, but I think I'm just going to have to step away from dotting. There we go. So let me know in the comments um, what uh, you what Christmas page you'd like us to do. We've got lots of Christmas books. You've seen them all in halls and things like that. Um, and we'll come back and we'll do another one together. Well, hopefully we'll get a good few more in yet before Christmas. So um, yeah. So here we are. Our lovely RJ page in Ser Serendipity. Beautiful, beautiful book. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. I'm sorry if I wasn't as upbeat as I usually am. But anyway, I'll let you go. So until we meet again for our next video or colour with me or colour Christmas with me, it will be. Uh, take really good care of yourselves. Have a fabulous weekend and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.